Hey guys, it's Cam Riley here, and as you've guessed by the title, yes, um, yeah, we're talking about the uh, tornado. Um, today, or well, this one will be about tornado, and next one will be about the P2, and the the one after that will be a, will be the Flying Scotsman. Yeah. Um, so tornado, you may be thinking that well, tornado, yes, the air swirly thing that destroys stuff not that kind of tornado no tornado the peppercorn a1 that was built by arthur peppercorn is that his name i don't know know in the comments if i am right or wrong but um yeah that recently hit 101.6 miles per hour which was fantastic absolutely amazing um i'm sorry if i look a bit like red and like sweaty it's because it's been really, really warm. Yeah. But, um... Yeah. Uh, Tornado is a... Um, LNER... Um, A1... Peppercorn class. Uh, built... In Doncaster, I think. Yeah. Um... I was going to say built by Sir Nigel Grizzly, but he didn't build it. <laughs> Uh, he built the Flying Scotsman and the P2, uh, but not talking about that. Um, so yeah, Tornado is a very, very, very powerful, big, like strong steam locomotive that it's only the one class, well, you can only find one class of its kind, and that is Tornado. There's no other ones built, or there was quite a few built, um like in the early 1900s but um in like 1960 as i've probably said in another video dr beeching you know diesels and 1968 done everything was well no well not all well like 99 percent of steam locomotives were scrapped and forgotten about and then diesels took over and in I think it was 1990, 1991, somewhere around there, um, a like oh, what are they call not company, um, like society type thing, uh, wanted to be, rebuild one, uh, called Tornado, and he took so much hard work, like it was beginning in like 1990. <coughs> and it finished in 2008 and that like span of years it took to build that that like like beast of a locomotive and they accidentally almost blew it up because there was like a water tank on the because um, it wasn't like properly finished but it was finished to or it was finished up to a point where they could like like put the fire in the firebox and light it up and like sort of begin its life again like sort of awaken it from the dead and yeah it was just a magnificent sort of like it was meant to be a private thing like a private um like test but then the news spread like, around and then people started to come over and they were like clapping and cheering and like shouting like not like mean but yeah was, like saying like well done and all that stuff and it was just a big thing and there is hardly like considering how many steam locomotives were built there is like a tiny smidge of them actually still running. Like, I like saying like a lot, don't I? But there were a few like experimental engines. Um, there was the turbo motive built by the LMS. Um, what other ones? Uh, there were, I'm not sure if these were experimental, but there were oil burning uh, steam locomotives. Yeah. God, it's warm. 
It's been warm all day. Um, yeah, Tornado. It is a magnificent steam locomotive built by the LNER. And if you're not like a train enthusiast like me, then you wouldn't really understand like how important steam was and like how people's lives impact in it. And since when 1960 came around, people were shocked. People were absolutely shocked that so many branch lines got took up and like so many steaming steam locomotives got scrapped. <laughs> Because I think it started off with like the little shunters and then they started to come into like the class 40s, you know, those massive beasts. Um, but I do like diesels, but I have to say steam is my favourite. Um, the electric ones, they're alright, but they're a bit too like modern for me. Um, like I said, I do like them. Uh, well, I like all trains, but like the electric ones are my least favourite. Steam is definitely my favourite. Um, the one wheeler. Yeah, I think there was one. There was one for the Caledonian Railway, and one built by the Great Western Railway. But basically, what? Okay, this is a bit off subject to Tornado, but little information about the one wheeler. The one wheeler was basically uh, eight an early, oh, sort of mid 1800s um, Great Western steam locomotive, and it was an old design, like one of the first designs ever uh, for the Great Western Railway. <clears throat> well, probably not the first ever, but anyway. Um, and it was a, I think it was 422, yeah, 422. Uh, basically four, like, trailing wheels at the front, two massive, I think they were eight foot, I'm not too sure, like, really big, like, two massive driving wheels, and then, like, two tra trailing wheels under the cab. But the, you know, like the coupling rods that you see on the outside of the wheels, the um, you know those things like that go along the wheels. Um, there wasn't a, a, there wasn't any of those on the one wheeler because they were all inside. All that linkage and motion was actually inside because with tank engines with like no pistons on the outside, they're actually in the inside. But ones with outside they sometimes have them on the inside like they may have one or two or just those on the outside but um yeah back to the, uh, the back to tornado uh, i think it was a three cylinder locomotive um and i think it had a double chimney wait yeah it does yeah it has a double chimney and smoke deflectors if you don't know what those are um Basically, when they went into a tunnel, the smoke like would and the steam would sort of like go around the tunnel because like chimney would be really close to the top of the like roof of the tunnel, and it would sort of like it would shoot out the funnel and it would like spread around the tunnel, and like it sort of the driver couldn't see like ahead because the smoke. And what the smoke deflectors did is, when it came round, it sort of, what, well, as in the name, it deflected the smoke from the cab, or it deflected it from the uh, driver's view from the cab. And that's why they were, like, put on some locomotives. Um, I, you wouldn't see them on tank engines, I don't think, no. Because tank engines are just like little tiny sort of, I won't call them shunting engines, but some of them were shunting engines. Um, but yeah. Uh, God, my back's hurting. My back's hurting. I'm really warm. Oh my God, I don't like the heat. Anyway. So yeah. And I've got cold, so you know, three things in one. Bloody hell. I don't like this. Um, but yeah. Tornado. It is a very nice looking engine. Um, I recommend you see it. I recommend you go visit it and see how big and powerful it is. And sort of, I mean, since 1960, it, the British British Railways decided to build the last ever steam locomotive called Evening Star. 
think it was 92220 and it was in the British Rail Green livery was, and Evening Star was the only one to have that livery the, all of the other 9Fs were in the BR Black and there were two tenno, basically two dra two two driving wheels, no, two trailing wheels at the front and then ten small driving wheels, but they had big pistons. So quite powerful and they could go up to quite a good speed. Um the frame like sort of went from the buff beam and then right up and then like really well, it went across the boiler and it went down a bit for the cab. Um, I think that's at the National Railway Museum. Uh, I think it is still there. I don't. I don't know because I haven't been in ages. But I remember standing next to it. And just it's huge. It's massive. Trains are just huge. I mean, like even with the little saddle tanks or O four rows, they're quite big. Because you're doing. I mean, I think some tank engines actually had to have like, their buffers ri raised up because like. The frame was so low and the, like it was so small that the buffers had to be like you know the like round sort of plate things on the front of the train on like the red buffer beam. They actually had to be ra raised up from the buffer panel, buffer, buffer panel, buffer beam, because um, they were just so low down. And if they were that low down, then the buffers would do that, and it wouldn't like you know do that. They wouldn't like go together and sort of spring together. Um, so yeah, that's why that happened. Uh, yeah. So tornado, it is a very. Uh, it's just words can't describe it. It's just. It's, it's magnificent. It's just a machine. I don't want to say machine. But like, it's just a beast of a locomotive. Right. People have said that steam trains are the closest thing that humans have built that is close to a living thing. I know. Because it's just... With cars, you just turn it on, push the pedal, and it goes. But with a steam train, you put coal in the firebox, you wait for it to heat up. You just wait for all that heat and steam to boil, the water to boil and make steam, and it just comes to life. Like when the driver and fireman like put it in the shed and then dampen down the fire and just let it rest for the night, they have to scrape out all that soot from in the smoke box and clean out the fire box, and that takes like ages, but it's worth it. It is worth it because. You don't normally get to be in the cab of a steam locomotive that has gone 101.6, eh? Hmm. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to do do, uh, the, do that because, you know, stuff. Um, but, yeah, uh, it is because it, it has been 15, 50 years since steam was scrapped fully. So yeah, um, I'll leave this video here. Um, if you like, if please leave some video ideas in the comment section down below. If you like my videos, please give them a good thumbs up and don't forget to hit the notification bell just so you don't miss any of my new videos. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye. It's bloody warm.